Welcome to our first lesson in physics, what is light? We're going to be looking at some of the basics of light and discussing some of the concepts in general based off of the note today. Now, I'm going to add some extra bits that I think are interesting, and I know a couple of students have asked me about it, some questions in class over the last couple of weeks and months. I'm going to try to add some extra content, but once again, just as a reminder, the extra stuff that I talk about either in class or on the note is more than likely not going to be assessed. It's just the general things from the note, from the practice. I might throw a curveball once in a while, but I'll be sure to give you a heads up in general. And with that, let's get into our first lesson of physics. So the idea here is that light is something that we can measure in terms of energy. So there are other forms of energy like x-rays, microwaves, ultraviolet, but for the sake of our unit, we're only going to be looking at visible light. Visible light is going to be behaving in very specific patterns and, and methods that are applicable to the things that we're going to be learning in this class. So we group these forms of energy in the electromagnetic spectrum, and these waves are considered electrical components of the magnetic field or magnetical components of the electrical field. They're kind of interchangeable in a funny way, so thus we call them the electromagnetic spectrum. These are waves of energy, and more on that later because, like I said, we, we call them waves, but that's not entirely true, especially with light. But for the sake of analogies that I'll be making, we'll treat them as a wave to start. And as we get into it, I'll kind of go into some of the further elaborations of, well, maybe it doesn't exactly behave like a wave all the time. So waves of energy that we're going to call light, they kind of behave in some ways, like the water that we see in this example below. However, unlike water, they're radiation, meaning that they don't actually need to travel through anything. So light does not require a medium to travel through. That's why it can travel through the vacuum of space from our sun to our planet. So it doesn't need anything physical to move towards. Now, remember from your astronomy unit last year in grade nine, when we talk about that light, there is no matter in a vacuum. So as I said earlier, it does not require a medium to transfer through. So as we use this example of a leaf floating on waves, we can see that the movement of the waves kind of determines the direction of that water. Same thing can be said with regards to light. The directionality of light, i.e. the sun's radiation, can be described in terms of which direction the wave is moving. So the energy of motion is kinematic, or, or we call it kinetic energy. It obeys, for the most part, the laws of movement, kind of. Again, I will add some extra cool tidbits as we go through this unit. Light is incredibly funky, and it behaves kind of, it behaves in a core, uh, abides by these laws sometimes, but not always. Energy is constantly moving. So in this diagram, we're moving from left to right. And as that light moves, it's allowing that object to the leaf, in this case of the example of waves of water, allows that to move up and down. This generally allows us to form a picture or an idea of what we call wavelength. The wavelength is the distance between the peaks or the crests of the wave. So wavelength in meters, kilometers, nanometers, we'll keep it metric because that is going to be your standard notation of measurement. So the electromagnetic spectrum uh, has all these different waves because as the wave's energy changes, the wavelength changes as well, as well as its frequency, which I'll describe briefly in the next part of the lesson. And, and if I'm going a little quick, you can always pause to get stuff down, rewind. That's the whole point of this, is that I want to try to condense it, put as much information as possible in a short enough video for you to consume, but that allows for you to digest it at your own pace. So what is the electromagnetic spectrum? Well, we have short and long wavelengths. The long, starting with radio waves, they can be anywhere from 10 to the 3 in terms of wavelength, or 1,000 meters. And gamma rays are the shortest wavelength that we talk about. They are 10 to the negative 12 in terms of their wavelength, so 0 0.0000000001 meters. So very, very, very small. These gamma rays are what turn the Incredible Hulk 
into, well, the Incredible Hulk in the, uh, <laughs> the Marvel Universe. So when we talk about the wavelengths, we also have to talk about the frequency. S long wavelengths or long wave uh, lengths have a low frequency for the most part in many cases, whereas short wavelengths tend to have a higher frequency. So the visible light, that's this band of the EM spectrum right around here, that's what we're going to be focusing on when we zoom down and look at it here because that's the only thing that we're going to really be able to work with in this class. Unfortunately, we're not going to be dealing with radio microwave or infrared light or ultraviolet x-ray and definitely not gamma radiation. So when we look at the wavelength of this visual, visible spectrum here, you can start to see that red has the longest in terms of uh, wavelength. It's, it's like an inversely proportional relationship. So wavelength and frequency, as the frequency goes up, right? As the frequency goes up, here we go, frequency, right? As the frequency goes up, the wavelength decreases. So I'll say that one more time just to kind of draw attention to this. So red light has a very low frequency, but a very large wavelength relative to violet light at the other end of the visible light spectrum. So we're only capable of seeing visible light and it's important to kind of note these two things. I'll, I'll draw attention to it when we talk a little bit about the cool stuff in our extension when we look at how uh, things move faster than light for example and why certain things redshift versus blue shift. But again, the idea here is that these visible waves are the only thing that we can see. All right, just to kind of finish up the lesson, uh, I kind of alluded to that, the idea here that visible light, this is what we perceive, and the colors are produced by different wavelengths of light. So the longest wavelength of visible light is red, and the shortest is violet. So white light contains all the colors of the rainbow, and that's why our sunlight is able to produce rainbows during a, a rainy day. If the sun is in the right position, the light is at the right time and if there is the right amount of rain falling at just the right amount of pace and distance from all those things happening. All right, so a uh, brief introductory lesson. Please make sure you take a look at the quote-unquote rest of the lesson uh, at home. So I'd like for you to fill in this chart here with the textbook information that I've provided on Classroom, please and thank you. And you can do that after watching, obviously, or whenever, really and truly. Just try to have it done before the next day in class because we're going to do those practice questions down here together in class the next day. All right. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have any questions, you know where to email me.